Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can visit my website, www.thebiodude.com. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and support, and of course, subscribe to my channel. And today, you can see I have an empty 18 by 18 by 18 in front of me, uh, made by ZooMed, and some vivarium supplies. And today, I'm going to show you guys how to build your Terraflora Bio Dude Bioactive Kit. I'm essentially going to go over everything that's in the kit, and then I'm going to actually build it. Uh, an actual terrarium because I'm going to be taking it to an ARBC for sale up in Arlington this weekend. For starters, you can see my 16 inch LED here at the top being held up by my props, and you have my Paraflora and the Hydro Grow. So, the Hydro Grow and the Terraflora work together in the aspect of when there's too much water in the Terraflora, it shoots it all out into the drainage layer to keep the flora nice and healthy. And I'll explain those processes shortly. So the very first step is opening up your hydro grow and dumping it into your terrarium. The general rule of thumb is you want about, uh, for a terraflora, you're going to want about an inch and a half to two and a half inches, maybe up to three, depending on the size of your vivarium, inch drainage layer. The terraflora is designed for very high humidity environments, such as dark frogs, um, you know, different newts, salamanders, uh, some other uh, some other types of amphibians such as red-eyed tree frogs um, that need relatively high humidity um, that doesn't uh, that doesn't fluctuate and I accidentally opened up the bag of floor. Oops. So I'm gonna put the other alright so I'm dumping two bags into an 18 cube. This is going to give me a pretty decent substrate layer. Now I will say the hydro grow is dusty made from glass. So it's one of those things that you just want to, you know, make sure that you spray the sides of the tank before you put gravel in there. It'll be fine. You make the substrate layer nice and even. You can see. Now, the next step is your screen pro is your screen protector. Now, I put these in the kits because it's a hobby standard, but it's not necessarily needed with the with the flora, in my opinion, because the Hydro Pro creates a nice even top layer. So it doesn't create bumps. Like the Leica, or the Hydro Balls, which are much heavier, that create the bumps, which allow your substrate to mix in. That's what makes the Hydro Grow so unique. It doesn't weigh anything, so your terrarium's not heavy to be moved around. It doesn't look bad. It's easy to drain if the water level gets too high. And if you don't want to use a screen, you don't need it. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Terraflora, as you can see, I already opened it up. And now the floor needs to be rather uh, pretty wet. Um, general rule of thumb is I fill this about halfway up with water. And the floor should be consistently moist and wet all the way through, but not excessively dripping. It can be dripping a little bit, but not excessive. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. You can see a little bit of extra water moving around, but the soil pretty much absorbed all of it, and that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to hold the perfect amount of substrate, uh, the perfect amount of water, without absorbing too much water while shooting out um, the proper amount into the drainage layer to prevent bad bacteria growth, which is a pretty big common problem with your other um, substrates. So. Now that it does hold all the necessary air pockets needed for proper root development in your plants, properly aerates, um, also helps your bioshot and bugs if you choose to use the bugs to work together to successfully create your biotype. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Bottom layer. Go right to the tank. Excellent. Now, if I see that some parts are dry, which it is, and that happens, you can simply just take your watering bucket or a mister and just lightly. There you go. So we have our initial layer 
our layer of bio of our substrate down. Next step is adding AAA sphagnum moss, which you then just dump the water into the bag. So, same principle, pretty wet for this, but, it, but not overly soppingly wet. So, and for, for this, you can mix it in with the substrate and put it on top. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix a little bit in with the flora here. This helps create air pockets, as well as breaks down rather quickly with the Bioshock which drives your ecological processes of your bioactive duty to self-cleaning, self-maintaining by breaking down the feces and shit and stuff like that. So you see how that's nice and mixed together? That's a, that's how, that's a really good mix there. Then you're gonna put spag right on top. This is a lot of layers, but trust me, over time these layers did, uh, do disintegrate and you will have to add new ones, typically every few months uh, because it is such a high humidity environment. The more humid it is, the quicker stuff breaks down. So we have our hydro grow drainage layer, which catches all of the extra water that is not needed in the substrate, protecting your plants and the longevity of your bioactive ecosystem. Then you have the terraflora substrate with the AAA sphagnum moss on top for all of your biodegradables besides the leaves. Then we're going to add my Bioshock, which as I said in other videos, uh, ended up uh, replacing the bugs. You can still use the bugs, and if you're keeping animals such as dart frogs, um, you're definitely gonna want springtails because smaller amphibians that typically live in these really moist biomes um, eat very small insects that reside on the ground, such as ice pods and springtails. So it's really important if you are like having a dart frog or something like that, that you would order the bugs separately as an addition to your kit. So for said bugs, I got a couple different types that I'm putting in. So the, so I, I am adding these in just for the sake. I have door, I have some, um, here you can see some of the springtails. These are a type that I've been culturing that are great for Ufaga. They're very, very small. They're very, very, very small. And then I have some dwarf white isopods in here as well as some orange scabers because I'm interested to see how the scabers do in a moist biome. And then I have some dwarf purples in here as well as more of the small isopods, or, or more, uh, smaller springtails. But again, with the Bioshock being in here, it is not 100% necessary to have the bugs to get the benefits of bio. So, this is what we got going on right now, I'm digging it. Uh, now it's time to add the layer of leaf litter. Now the leaf litter, what it does is slowly breaks down um, uh, with the natural biological processes that are happening in your vivarium, and essentially become new soil to continually benefit your tank and provide food. So think of the AAA spag moss as not only a benefit, but think of it as gas. Because it's kind of what it is for these types of tanks. There we go. Now you can see sticks and other stuff mixed in with the leaves. I collect my leaves from the middle of the woods. So there's always going to be sticks and stuff like that, but that for that guarantees no nasties. So next thing that I'm going to do is start decorating. And now I have a lot of different options here with what I want to do. So I have one of my cork bark mounts that I have some bromeliads attached, and I definitely wanted to put them in here. And I think what I'm going to do is actually put them right here like this in the corner. I've, yeah, I can dig it. I'm gonna take a little bit of the spag moss around and I'm just gonna stick it to it to help retain moisture. So when you have the, your, the bromeliads mounted up epiphytically like this, um, you can easily put like a zip tie or some of my bromeliad mounting clips to keep them up. Um, just do not, you know, let them stay dry too long. So I will be installing a Miss King nozzle onto here which I'll show you guys at the end of the video. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of cork bark. So my thought process is doing like a, um, a cork bark mosaic in the background. I 
and then I'm gonna take this beautiful, beautiful bromeliad. Here's one of the, I sell these on my website. The size of this thing, it's beautiful. Now I'm gonna flip it. Mm. I have to make some changes. So I'm gonna put this back here. I'm gonna dig it all the way down to the drainage layer. And plant this one good, since it is such a larger bromeliad. Got some moss here. It's dried sheet moss. I'm gonna wet it and then it'll come back to normal in about a few minutes. Okay, let's see here. Now as you can see, I'm not using a bunch of plants in here. And the reason I'm not doing that is because I really want the bromeliads to be centerpiece because they're stunning so put a nut pot in there that's what that's gonna do that's gonna help breaks down really quickly benefits the substrate five shot loves to break it down as does the bugs move the water dish in here now if you're keeping uh, now typically what I'm gonna recommend is you put a glass canopy at the top here to keep the humidity in. Now the Zoomed screens do not rust, but the Zoomed or but the, with the uh, Exoterra ones will rust, and they will rust quickly. So just keep that in mind when you are setting that type of stuff up. And I'm gonna go. Let's go. Matt, what do you think of that? Yeah. Good. Okay. And what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give this a light misting as well as a watering. So what I mentioned here, um, you know, I'm keeping it pretty simple with, with the upper milliads because that's really what I wanted. You want to, you know, put a glass canopy on here and after I'm done misting, I'll go and install the mist cane. Okay. And then the light watering to the plants, the moss. And if you want to get a close up of that, Matt, while well, I go get the moss. guys I thought I had it on my table so what I'm gonna do I got the double nozzles here so I, I always sell the Miss King parts on my website and they always have free shipping I would hate ordering these little tiny pieces um, and then getting charged like 750 to ship two little things like this it really would irritate me always free shipping so what I'm gonna do you can put them in the in the back or the front I'm gonna put them in the front and then I'm just gonna put a hole right into here. Now again, there are other ways to do this, but this is how I do it, because this is what works for me. And then the next step would be, like I said, with the glass top, go to Lowe's and you can get a piece of glass, cut it from here all the way back. So all the humidity is gonna be held in without destroying the lid. But if you have an Exoterra, you need to nix that lid all together and get yourself a custom glass lid made because they will rust within about a month and a half put it right like that put on the top and there you have your terra flora bio Duke kit which the kit includes the hydro grow it includes the screen divider it includes the flora the spag moss the bio shot and the leaf litter if you bought one of my bulk boxes it includes the substrate 
the drainage layer, the bite shot, and the AAA sphagnum moss. And again, guys, my name is Josh Rosser. I'm the owner and founder of the Bio Dude. Definitely check out my website, biodude.com. Do the bites.